If you happen to be an urban prep steader, say you're someone who lives in a high-rise condo and all you have is a little shrimp-sized balcony to work with, a container garden is gonna be the only route for you. But I want to give you hope because there is so much nutrition that you can grow in that kind of an environment. If you'll stay tuned in the next few minutes, I'm gonna just give you one of the ideas that I would have for you. <laughs> Don't go away. If you've heard me talk about sweet potatoes, I do not renounce anything I have said. Those are my one go-to favorite I think everybody should grow. But if there was a close second, it would be regular potatoes. In fact, I want you to come over here and just peek down into this rough looking little um, container I've got. I was hoping to move this spring and I'm still hoping to, I may not get to, but I planted a lot of things in containers. And I wanna show you this. So if I look down in here, you're gonna see some of my little potato plants that I have growing. I also have some common spurge, a little bit of grass that's taken root, some wood sorrel, which I love to keep. I even have wood sorrel over here and a little baby maple tree that's growing. Another grass, some more wood sorrel. But if you look down here close to the ground, you're gonna notice that the little purple potatoes that are my very favorite, those little small ones, are all throughout this. Now, if anybody can grow anything in a container, it's gonna be in something like this. When these are getting all rough looking, when they get, um, actually they've finished blooming their beautiful little purple flowers and the tops of them often start turning yellow and crispy, that's the perfect time for you to plan on harvesting. And that's today. So. I'm just gonna put on gloves. You could use a little spade like this, but really gloves are gonna be how we're going to harvest these the easiest so you don't miss anything and you don't stab any of them because I don't wanna ruin any. <laughs> and then we'll talk about the virtues of these amazing little guys. There are gonna be folks out there that tell you that there is nothing that you can buy produce-wise from the grocery store that you can get to grow again in your own garden. But my grandma would disagree. She would tell you that she was gonna do it anyway. And I have seen m with my own eyes and eaten of her peach pies myself from store-bought peaches that she just put the peach pit in the ground and got it to grow into a whole tree and feed us peaches for years. So don't be daunted by what everyone says, but potatoes are one of those wonderful anomalies that is going to grow great. So buy organic if you can. You don't want the ones that have been sprayed with any kind of bad stuff, but find your favorite ones too. If you know that they're gonna probably grow well, get your favorite ones. Mine are these little fingerling potatoes. And I'll tell you, the darker the purple, the better. Not because they taste a whole lot different, but one of the neat things about the purple ones are they're higher in those antioxidants. I think they call them anthocyanins that actually suppress cancer growth. Now, I am not aware that I have any kind of cancer growth to suppress right now, but anything that's that good, I'm gonna be all about it. So, if you need to be thinking about antioxidants in your diet, this is a great way to incorporate them. Any kind of vegetable that grows with deep, rich color, like beets, and you can even get purple carrots and purple tomatoes and all of them. They're rich in those anthocyanins and antioxidants. This kind of potato, big or small, is going to be absolutely great for a whole lot of things. Let me just tell you a couple, brain health for one thing, and boy do I need help as much as I can with brain health. They prevent blood clots, it boosts cognitive functions, um, it's rich in potassium and folate and vitamin C and protein, and potatoes are rich in fiber. The neat thing about these little potatoes is that about three of these is a serving size, and of course these vary in size quite a bit themselves, but about three of the uh, most average sized of these little potatoes are going to be about a hundred calories and what's wonderful about them is they're very starchy and so they're going to make you feel full it's that fiber in them and the starchiness in them so in a crisis situation where you're needing not only a comfort food but something that's going to be high in nutrition and very filling this is almost the easiest thing you can grow besides sweet potato now 
if you're thinking about growing these, let me just tell you ahead of time, they grow best in kind of a loamy soil. So one of the ideal environments for them is if you happen to live in an area where trees lose all their fall leaves in the autumn, you know, go ahead and those, those piles of leaves that you pile up and let compost or stuff down into potato bags so you can grow potatoes in them the next spring, that's the perfect kind of soil where it's, where it's very loamy and just has lots of aeration to it. It makes it easy for them to grow. So think of loamy, think of straw bale gardening. These are fantastic in straw bales. Um, when you put them in the ground, you're going to put um, with the little eyes up when you plant them. Try to keep that in mind if you can, and that'll grow out of the soil. And in about 10 weeks from the time that you planted them, it's about the general average of time that it's going to need before you're ready to harvest these. Again, like I said, after they have flowered and lost their flowers and started to look all wilty on top, you know it's a good time to go ahead and harvest them. And interestingly, potatoes, once you do harvest them, you're going to want to let them sit for about two weeks, really. You want to not wash them. Remind, remind yourself later of that. Don't wash them immediately. You just kind of brush off all the dirt. Keep them in a nice airy type basket or on a wire shelf in a back pantry or something like that. Let them aerate and just kind of be dry for about two weeks before you start making all those meals with them. But when it is time to start cooking with potatoes, you can do just about anything. I'm telling you, you can make stews, breads, mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, boiled. You can make french fries and chips. You can make fermented potatoes. You can make hash browns. You can make that wonderful potato salad in the summertime. My mouth is watering just talking about all this. One of the neat things you'll see in a future episode, we're going to make a replacement for bread yeast with just potatoes. Did you know you could do that? So just in case you were one of the folks that during the, the 2019 when we were all locked in our houses trying to make our own sourdough bread, if you had poor luck with that, you've still got another chance to redeem yourself. If you don't have yeast, you can make the same equivalent of yeast by potatoes. And many have done that for hundreds of years. So we'll do that in a future episode. Now, primarily, I'll say this, about two thirds of the potatoes that we eat here in the United States are grown up in that northwest corner in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, down into Colorado, and then Maine on the opposite end of, of the United States. That's where most of all of our potatoes comes from, is from those states. They just have the right soil and the right kind of climate. But it's nice for all of you who live in high elevations this is a good crop for you. So if you have a hard time with everything else, at least give potatoes a shot. They're cheap, they're plentiful, they're very filling. Um, and I haven't even gotten into all of the other things. Like when I was a little child and my father taught us how to pan for gold in the streams in Oregon along the Oregon Trail and where the gold rush was 100 or so years ago. To extract that gold, you're going to need some mercury. And no, I'm not suggesting you go out and buy any of that. But then you need potatoes because if you cut the potatoes, it sucks up all that mercury so that you've got the little gold shavings that you've found. It's, it's amazing. Um, it's kind of a drawing mechanism that the potatoes have about them. And you'll learn all about it if you do a little bit of Googling. Glycoalkaloids, I believe, are what are are in potatoes that make them help with acne and any kind of skin uh, disruptions. They calm your skin, they brighten it, and if you have acne or any kind of breakouts or boils or a, a burn or anything like that, if you've gotten into poison ivy, this helps. It's amazing what you can do with potatoes. I haven't even touched all the ideas but there are many out there and I'll put some that I've forgotten to even mention right now down below this video so you can see them later. One other neat thing I didn't even mention about these is that you can harvest just what you can eat in the next few weeks and leave the rest in the ground. In fact, you can leave potatoes in the ground really almost up to that first frost, not a minute later because they'll be ruined if they get any kind of that cold frost that hits them. 
but all the way up till then, you can kind of harvest these all through the summer and into the fall. In fact, if you leave the plants in the ground after you've harvested most of the potatoes from below them, the plants will try to reproduce more potatoes. It's just amazing. So I've got here about enough for the next couple of weeks and I'll enjoy them in all kinds of meals and dishes. I hope you take the time to find some at the store or get your favorite and let them start sprouting those little tops, those little eyes that they do and go ahead and just plant them. Give them a chance and just see if you don't have some miracles grow in your garden. Okay, I hope I've given you some helpful information today. I hope you take the time to share this with somebody that you love. And mostly, I hope you go out and find somebody to bless today. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>